as I went to turn a summer evening, a walking down by the broom below. Twas a there I met a wheel, with cheeks like roses and skin like tears. Says I be her, my fair. This is the Clyde at Glasgow, a hustling, bustling waterway given over to trade, commerce and industry. Cranes, wharves and warehouses crowd both banks of the river at Glasgow, where the Clyde becomes one of the world's great waterways. Here, ships of all sizes and nationalities load and discharge their cargoes. Tugs, small in size but stout of heart, are a familiar sight on this stretch of the river as they nose in and out of dockland, the network of quays, basins, sheds and railway sidings that make up the port of Glasgow. Puffers, too, have their place in dockland, for these dumpy little maids of all work carry their cargoes right up to the shallows under the city's bridges. In dockland, even the cats go about their business with a serious, purposeful air, The dockers, with a forest of cranes to help them, handle each year on an average six million tons of goods brought from or dispatched to every quarter of the globe in ships of all sizes and classes. And the seagulls? Well, they keep an eye on things. In a port the size of Glasgow, general cargoes include practically everything, from nuts and bolts to railway engines. Upriver from the docks, the Clyde is crossed by many bridges. This is a suspension bridge for pedestrians only. And this is one of the many bridges which take the city's traffic over the river. Downstream, back in the center of the dock area, there are ferries instead of bridges. Passenger ferries nose their way from bank to bank at various points along the river. And there's always something about the shipping to catch the eye on a ferry crossing. These ferries provide on the river the kind of service that buses give on the road. They're small, they carry only a limited number of passengers, but they cross and recross almost continuously, all day long. The passenger ferries save many people a long roundabout journey, up one bank of the river, across the bridges, and down the other bank. By ferry, they just go straight across. In addition to the small passenger ferries, there are big ferries for cars and lorries. These are useful not only because they're a shortcut, but because they bypass the crowded city bridges. Occasionally, the ferries have to wait for ships to pass up or down the river, just like waiting at the traffic lights. The streets of Dockland are as bustling and traffic-laden as the Clyde itself. The horse-drawn lorry still plays its part in the transport of goods, slower, perhaps, than car, van or diesel lorry, but an important link, nevertheless, in Clydeside's haulage system. Docks mean ships, ships mean seamen, and seamen like to have a home ashore when their ships in port. Seamen's missions, another familiar sight in Dockland, provide just such a home, where a good bed and good food can be had at reasonable prices. Everywhere in Dockland, and at all hours of the day, there's an air of busyness. The rumbling traffic on the quayside streets. The throbbing engines of the tugs on the river. The staccato din of the shipyards on the banks. But there's more to it than this. 
The pattern of life in Dockland is woven from many different strands. A few people have time to stand or sit and stare. Indeed, kind sir, it's the truth I tell you. I'm a bleacher lost in my But most people go about occupied, busy with their own affairs. Oh, there she goes, peely heels and pointed toes. Look at her feet, she thinks she's neat. Black stockings and dirty feet. In Glasgow, shipping and learning rub shoulders, for the university is only a stone's throw away from the docks and looks down on Kelvin Grove Park, a green oasis amid the city streets and buildings. To step out of Kelvin Grove Park is to step into the workaday world of Dockland. There are the workmen on their way to or from the ships or wharves or railway sidings, the men who keep the port of Glasgow going. There is the traffic, the ceaseless stream of vans, lorries, buses, trams and private cars that rumble over the bridges from early morning until gathering dusk. And there is the river itself, strangely beautiful in the gloaming, when ships and sheds and bridges and buildings are silhouetted against the evening sky. This is the river, which not so long ago was a shallow salmon stream and is now a great international waterway. The river which gave rise to the saying, the Clyde made Glasgow, but Glasgow made the Clyde. It's seven long years since I loved a sailor. It's seven long years since he gave a war. 
And seven times seven I'll wait upon him And bleach my clays here on the Kelvin Hall No lassie, lassie, ye have been faithful And thought on him when far away Twa hearts will surely be rewarded and you'll part me mere here on the Kelvin Hall.